Whoa! Didn't see that coming. Going fast is fun, but sometimes you need to make sudden turns. And that's true whether you're riding a scooter or whether you're navigating in today's business environment. Because today's environment is not a straight line race. It's more like an obstacle course. Still, many businesses are used to optimizing the existing processes and optimizing for the current state. And that makes sense because that means that you're getting the most out of the resources that you have today. But it also assumes predictability. It assumes a steady state. The world today is simply no longer that predictable. Yeah, whether you're facing pandemics, supply chain disruptions, global trade tensions, or changing customer expectations, being able to predict what's going to happen is going to be very difficult. And that's why organizations need to also optimize for change. Now, responding to change isn't an entirely new idea. That's why we talk about business agility so much. But too often agility is equated with speed. You will hear slogans like, we need our IT to become more agile so they can speed up. But it's not just about speed. The Titanic also went fast, but it didn't steer very well. And we all know that that didn't end exactly well. Whoops. Instead, we need to be able to steer. Agility is like the steering wheel on your car. Because today's business environment is much more like a rally course. And on a rally car, better steering can do as much to help you win the race as a bigger engine would. Because a bigger engine just adds more weight and burns more fuel. Being prepared for change and expecting the unexpected doesn't mean not having a plan, though. If you can predict things, that's great. And modern technology available in the cloud, like data, machine learning, analytics, actually allow you to become a better predictor. But you won't be able to predict everything all the time. So it helps to have a decision framework that guides you through the different levels of uncertainty. In many cases, you can't predict the exact outcome, but you can identify options. You can divide the world into certain scenarios that likely one of these three, three things will happen. Identifying options is a bit like buying insurance. It protects you against undesirable situations. And even if it never actually occurs, you will be happy that you bought this insurance. All of us have accident insurance for our cars, but everybody is happy to actually not have an accident. But you can mold the whole world into ABC type scenarios. So invariably, you will still be wrong sometimes. But still, you have a way to address that you will work on minimizing the cost of being wrong. And once again, the cloud is a great technology for this because you can run rapid experiments, you can scale up and down, and generally make quick maneuvers. And that minimizes the cost of being wrong. So trying to be right is good, but not sufficient. You also need to be prepared to be wrong sometimes. Sometimes, though, we give up valuable options without realizing it. I once heard a story of a CIO who had signed a five-year outsourcing contract. And he was very proud of the savings that he had achieved because apparently he had negotiated very good rates. But in this process, he also sold something. He also gave something up. And he gave up his options. He gave up the option to use new technology. He gave up the option to bring more staff in-house. He gave up the option to increase or decrease his staffing. And those options are valuable, especially in a world of change and uncertainty, having options becomes more valuable. So be aware that when you're buying something, you might be selling something or giving something up in the same transaction. For example, valuable options. Now, organizations that optimize for the steady state 
might do the exact opposite of organizations that optimize for change. As we've seen, if you optimize for the steady state, you're likely to outsource your IT and your software delivery because you might be able to negotiate better rates. Organizations that optimize for change insource their software deliver delivery because it affords them more agility and faster feedback cycles. Likewise, organizations who assume a steady state will look to eliminate variance. They prefer uniformity. Whereas organizations that embrace change and optimize for change understand that variance is part of the real world and they will prepare for it. And last but not least, organizations assuming a steady state will write down all the requirements, define a plan, and measure their success by how well they execute to this plan. Organizations that optimize for change understand that only stepwise refinement and iterations lead to a successful product. This doesn't mean that one method is better than the other. You always have a choice. And each approach suits a certain scenario better than the other. And in a world that's hard to predict and full of uncertainty, being prepared for change is a very good approach. Some folks might worry that being agile is inefficient. We saw the car moving in a zigzag. Wouldn't it be much more efficient for the car to move in a straight line? And in fact, Formula One drivers look to minimize steering in order to win the race. But moving faster in the wrong direction is the most inefficient thing that you could actually do. So in a world of change and uncertainty, the ability to steer is actually the new efficiency. Not just our business environment changes, technology also keeps evolving. So in the next episode of TN Transformation, we will look at how you can stay in touch with your IT engine room.